Changing chords smoothly is probably the biggest hurdle for most guitar players to get over initially. And it's one thing that if you can't do that well, it can really ruin the feel of a song when you're singing it with your friends, right? So in this video, I wanna give you some tips for making your chord changes as smooth as possible. The first tip is to know the individual chord shapes in the song you're trying to play very well on their own before even trying to change between them. If you don't know, for example, if you don't know and if you can't go right to an F and a C and you're trying to change between them, it's gonna make it really tough. It's gonna compound it and make it a lot more tough actually to switch between the chords. So what you wanna do is make a list of the chords you need for a song and then make sure you can go right to them. And you may be like, well, I don't know if I can go right to them. If you can put all your fingers down on one chord all at the same time, then you can go right to it. If you're doing one finger at a time, then you can't go right to it. That's a really quick, easy test to do that. So, like this is part of the learning process and part of making a song sound really good is to get the chord to where you have it and you own it, right? So that's the first tip. Know the chords on their own to where you can go right to them. And if you're still going kind of one finger at a time, a really good uh, way to kind of cross train to get chords to where you can go right to them all at one time is to go like first, second, third finger for the C chord and then do the opposite next time, go three, two, one. And then do the same thing, one, two, three, three, two, one. That'll really help you. Another thing that's gonna help you transition between chords pretty easily is just knowing the song. So if you need to print out the chord chart and memorize and listen to the song while you're going through the chord chart, that will help you a lot. If you know a C is coming up next, what you can do is think about that C, think about the way it looks, think about the way it feels, and then make the switch. If you're kind of guessing or don't know what chord's coming up next, you might be panicking like, oh, what's next? Oh yeah, C, then I'm late for the change, right? So think about what chord's coming next, know it, think about the way it feels, think about the way it looks, just be aware of where you are in the song and then make the change. That'll help a lot. Let's go through some chord progressions, really simple chord progressions that will help you kind of implement these tips for getting between chords smoothly. The first one is just an F to a C because we're gonna be using that one a lot later. So put an F major chord on there. It can be this little partial shape. It can be the full bar chord shape. Or it can be just the top four strings. I'm gonna use the top four strings. So first thing you need to be able to do is go right to that shape. And then think about the C chord. Think about the way it looks, feels, and then make the change. And then do the same thing. Think about the F chord. Think about the way it looks and feels. And make the change. And if you're noticing you're having trouble, spend a little bit more time this next week working on just these chord shapes. But just being aware of where you are and thinking about the next chord, thinking about the way it looks and feels and then nailing it is the goal here. So just work on getting these individual shapes down, C and F, and then work on switching between them. Next chord change, and I am choosing which chords you're changing between here on purpose to help you with the songs we're gonna learn later. It's just an uh, A to a D, so an A major. And you can make this like this or just kind of the traditional way, and then switch to a D. Go back to the A, and if you need to spend more time on the A, that's totally cool. Just put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, to where you can go right to it, or this way, right? And then to the D as well. Make sure on the A that you're not hitting the low E string. And make sure for the D, you're only playing the top four strings, not the A or the E string, little A or E. Think about the way the next chord looks and feels. Make the change, A. Think about that D. Think about the A. And this is the process you're gonna to wanna to go through if you're trying to learn a song and you're just not getting the chord changes, if you're not, being, you're not able to keep up with the original recording at that tempo. Just isolate, first of all, the chords, make sure you have them down, and then isolate just one change at a time, just two chords. If you try to play a whole song when you're having trouble with changes, that's gonna make it a lot harder for you. So break it up into little bite-sized pieces. The next and last chord change we're gonna do is just the D to an E major. And this brings up kind of an important concept of a common fingering, like an anchor finger. In my index finger, check it out on a D chord. Think about the E, the way it looks and feels. My index finger stays on that string, but it just moves down one fret. And then the rest of my E falls in place. So that's kind of my common finger that I have.
And another tip that I want to give you here, just as kind of a stepping stone, is oftentimes if you have a, a strumming pattern like this, it's eighth notes. One thing that's really common is to have an open strum in between the chord changes, just to kind of mask your change to give you a little more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and three and four. So that's kind of a stepping stone tool. The ultimate goal is to have no blip or gap. I know the things in this lesson probably seem pretty simple, but they are very effective if you apply them, and they'll get your song sounding much smoother and your chord transition sounding a lot smoother. So your assignment for this lesson is to review the clean chord transition tips, and then just work on the F to C, the A to D, and then the D to E chord transitions. And if you need to nail down these chord shapes first before working on the transitions, do that too before trying to actually transition between these three little chord progressions. So my question for you for this video is, do you already have all your open chord shapes down or are these pretty new for you? You know, you may have one or two down, you may have all of them down. Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you.